Lucien. Hi. Hi. I didn't expect that. Um, that's good though. Um, okay, I'll, I'll be talking a little bit about uh, what is new in XDBug. How many of you are familiar with XDBug? Just a show of hands. Okay. It's about 33 here. Yeah. I've, I've seen you, it's okay. You don't have to wait. <laughs> okay, so XDBug is a, a tool that helps you debug your PHP applications. Now, I usually uh, can, I can probably talk for a whole day about this, but I only have 50 minutes. So I can only focus on the new things in XDBug. A little bit about myself. Hi, I'm Derek. I've already done the waving, so I don't need to wave back. Uh, I currently live in London. Uh, for my work, I work on a MongoDB PHP driver. If you have any questions about MongoDB, feel free to come and find me as well. I'll be around today and tomorrow. Um, I, uh, I wrote XDBug. I also implemented PHP's daytime support. Uh, time zones are particularly very annoying if you have to fly all the way across the world to come speak at a conference because my body thinks it's now 7 in the morning. Uh, that's great. I like maps, beer, and whiskey, but we we'll won't talk about it right now. So what I will be talking about is XDBug. So XDBug is an extension to PHP. Um, it adds additional information in the form of debugging output, stack traces, but it also allows you to step through uh, a running application while it is going on. Now, if I have some time at the end, I will actually be showing that, um, uh, but with a limited amount of time, I might not get there. All right, so by default, if you would install XDebug, you'd suddenly see that whenever you have a, a warning or a notice, that it will tell you exactly not only where it is, but all the other function calls, how you ended up there, which is kind of handy. Um, and, and sometimes, what you want is that when you get your notice or warning, is that your PHP script doesn't continue running, but instead you want it stopped at the same time, right? As an example here, uh, think about you writing some code that loops to 10,000 different entries that you want to show on a page, for example. Okay, let's make it 100. Um, but if you have like a, a little bit of an error in some of your code, maybe for each iteration of this loop, you might then suddenly show a warning or an error message on screen which isn't particularly great because you can then see so many error messages that you might not be able to find what the problem is. So what I added in XDBook 2.3, which is about two years old now, is a new feature that allows you to, the moment when an error or a notice happens, abort the script so that you can see your only single error message without having to wait until all the other things are shown. Um, in addition to this, it also adds a feature that in I have run into this where I, I've written an application, pulled in some dependencies with Composer, and one of those libraries in Composer turns off display errors for me, uh, which is really annoying because that means that if I write, write message in my own code that goes wrong, then I can't see those anymore because they've been disabled by a random library. Now, it is a really bad thing for libraries to do that, but some of them still do that. So by setting these other two settings here, like force error reporting and force display errors, it basically tells PHP, ignore what other code does. You won't be able to override these settings. So you would always get your error reporting with the right levels and always get your display errors, which is kind of a handy feature. Uh, of course, these things are only be able to set in PHP INI because otherwise applications will, bind, will find a way to override these settings at some point. Uh, similarly, uh, with 2.3, I uh, hope to show that, as I said before, is that if you're doing the live debugging, you'll see quite a bit more information. You can now, uh, you can now set uh, breakpoints on exceptions, saying, well, if this specific exception is being thrown in my application, abort the script and show the current status in my ID, which is a very useful thing to have. Uh, it also adds some additional information to exceptions, and uh, it helps you diagnose some configuration issues, which is which you sometimes might run into when you have SA Linux installed or something like that. All right, so another big thing that came in XDBook 2.3 is paths, path coverage. So let me illustrate this with a demo. And this, um, this ties into PHP unit, if, in case you were at uh, the workshop yesterday. So with PHP unit, you can tell it that whenever you run the tests, that it also tells you which line of the code have been executed. This is called code coverage. Uh, code coverage you don't have to use through PHP unit. You can do it directly uh, with a simple script that I've done here. So if you look at the bottom part of this, um, you see that I use PHP code coverage here, and I do two runs. One of them is, star is start with coverage one, 
and one of them is coverage two. And in the first one, I'm calling this if then else method with the arguments true and false. And in the second time, I call them with false and true. Okay, what I'm going to do is, is this function, the function that you see on top here, I'm going to run this twice. And then you get an output, something to this, right? You see that um, both if statements have been covered and all the lines have been covered because if you look at the function, what I'm doing here, if A is, is true, then I show A is hit, and when B is true, I show B is hit. If I call this twice, once with A set and B unset, and once with uh, A unset and B set to true, that means you still hit every line of your code. However, this is uh, lying to you. It is lying to you because what it doesn't tell you is that you haven't basically tested all possible iterations, right? Because we haven't tested where both A and B are true or where both A and B are false. Now, this, um, this is something you don't necessarily want to do for all of your methods, but for the methods that are um, really complicated or are really important for your business logic, uh, you, you basically haven't tested it well enough yet in some cases. So the, what I've added a few years ago is something called paths and branch analysis. So the way how this works is if you use Xdebug directly, you need to turn it on by extra flag. It's called the, the branch check uh, flag. And then you get output like this out of Xdebug. Now, this is something that you can dump with an external tool. Uh, it doesn't do this automatically for you. But it does tell you a few things here. It, it gives you information about five branches and four possible paths. Now, this is kind of tricky to see, so I have an image instead. So if you look at this function, test.php, so what are the possible paths through here? You can have A and B being false. You can have A false, B true. Uh, A true and B false, and both of them being true. And that is represented with the different colors in this graph here. So the red one is where A and B are both false, and the purple one is where a and B are both true. And as you can see, because this is a dotted line, it means that this path hasn't been followed. So now this is visualized as four possible paths. Uh, you can see whether the colored line is either uh, dashed, means it wasn't executed, and it is solid, well, it is executed. So this, for this simple example, four possible paths, two of them are executed, and two of them, ha two of them hasn't been. So this basically tells you if only written half the amount of tests that also cover this function or method. Now, there is one problem here. Every time you have an if statement or a loop, you increase the amount of bit possible parts by two. So if you have 10, possible, uh, 10 if statements, how many lines do you get on the screen? You get 1,024. Now, at that time, it is very difficult to visualize this information, right? Because can you really distinguish 1,024 different colors? It's going to be very difficult to do, right? I certainly can't do it. So the visualization of this is, is something that is a lot harder than it seems. Um, so the problem with this is that it's quite a powerful way to show which tests you can still write, but it's hard to visualize. And the other additional point is that it is really, really slow to do. Because when PHP executes things, it does it internally really fast. But in order to do part and branch analysis, I need to inject my own code at every single th thing that PHP does, making it really, really slow. So this is why I say this isn't something you want to do for every method that you have. I'll get back to this in a moment. All right, in Xdebug 2.6, which is the current stable release, uh, it added support for PHP 7.2. Um, it has some fixes for variable resolutions that was in there since uh, the PHP 7.0 compatible release. Uh, we also don't have PHP 5 support anymore. Uh, PHP 5 is no longer supported uh, in Xdebug because it is an extension that hooks into PHP internals so much. Supporting multiple minor versions of PHP can be such a burden, and it's simply not worth for me doing this anymore, considering that you can still also just install an older extension if you really still need to use PHP 5. But as Rasmus showed earlier, you really want to have, use PHP 7 because it's good for the planet, right? Um, and Xdebug 2.6 also adds another few minor, uh, smaller features. It does, now does memory profiling. So Xdebug's profile always done profiling on time, showing you which functions are being slow, but it never really showed which functions take up a lot of memory. So that's a new thing in there. 
Um, we have garbage collection statistics, which is probably a very niche thing to look at, uh, but it's kind of cool. Um, and on the debugging side, there are a few other things added there as well. So probably the most interesting one is the notifications and warnings feature. This is something that some things that IDEs need to implement, and I know PHP Storm has implemented that. It's a feature that in its debugging console, every time you get a notice or a warning or error message, Xdebug also sends this notification to the IDE, so it can visualize this in a debugging console without showing it up on the screen. So that means you still get all the information out of it in case something goes wrong, but it doesn't, it's not going to clutter either uh, your nicely designed website or your uh, XML or JSON creating API calls, right? Because if Xdebug would it, or PHP would inject information in there, you can't parse it as, as HTML or uh, RST or anything like that anymore because PHP has just injected an error message into it. So that's kind of handy to have. It now also supports using funny characters and property names. And by funny characters, I mean here the null character. Uh, some people find it interesting to add a null character into their arrays, array keys or property names, and uh, the null character cannot be shown in XML in any sort of form, so we had to come up with a different way of transporting that information, which is also kind of handy. Um, it makes its debugger log a lot better as well. So sometimes people have uh, issues getting Xdebug configured to talk to the PHP installations. Uh, there are a variant of reasons why this can be the case. Uh, it is most often on the IDE side, maybe misconfigured or slightly done wrong or many reasons. Um, but what is a nice thing that on the Xdebug side you can tell it to log all possible attempts to make debugging connections and it will then tell you whether it, co whether it can make a connection and if it can, also log all the communications between the IDE and Xdebug. Uh, it will also tell you when it can't make a debugging connection and hopefully the reason why it can't make those debugging connections. That can be, well, the host name is wrong or it can't connect to the IP address and things like that and stuff like that. So the debugging log is probably the first thing you want to look at if you cannot get Xdebug to work with an IDE. It is also information I'm going to ask for if you think you have found a bug in Xdebug's debugging interface. All right, so... PHP 7.2 uh, adds, or 7.2 adds uh, some interesting functionality. Like, if you look at how switch is implemented in PHP, it is basically a chain of is, if, else statements. So if you do switch A with case one, what it does is if A equals one, echo this information. If A equals two, echo this information. Else if A equals three, you know how this goes, right? The more case, space, case statements you have, the more comparisons PHP has to do. Now what PHP 7.1 does, as you can sort of see here, is that it has these cases with the statements for each line. Now in PHP 7.2, this, this, this got done better in PHP by making a table up front that you can see in this line. It then will compare the correct key, in this case the numbers one to six, and immediately jump to the right location what PHP needs to execute without having to do the if-else statements all the time, which is really nice, and it makes PHP 7.2 faster. Unfortunately, it also means that if you would do single stepping through this, you don't see the stops on all the if statements anymore. Or more annoyingly, if you would do code coverage, you don't see that PHP actually does the comparisons for each case statement. Um, so, this is annoying, so I had to fix Xdebug. Anybody wants to guess how I fixed that? No? Yeah, it's easy. Ignore the operation altogether. Uh, so basically make this a non-operation. So sadly, PHP runs a little bit slower again. But then again, I argue that if you're running a debugger, uh, you shouldn't be too worried about it being slightly slow anyway, because the difference in speed is going to be a lot less than you having to look at what happened and clicking continue a few times. So, um, but yes, newer, PHP, newer versions of PHP make, think, make PHP things go faster, but make things more complicated for Xdebug. So that's, that's my life, trying to fix things. 
Now, I've mentioned before that the code coverage with path analysis is actually pretty slow, and that is because it literally tries to do everything, uh, including all of PHP units uh, source code, which you're not really interested in when you're running code coverage for your own project type, or you might not be interested in all the vendor libraries that are pulled in, like if you're writing, uh, say, your, your own plugin for Magento, you might not want to do the code coverage for Magento itself, you might only be interested in the own plugin that you're writing. Uh, previous to Activic 2.6, there was no way of restricting code coverage to just the specific locations that you were doing it. Um, uh, so Activic 2.6 has filters for this, and uh, so you can configure a blacklist and a whitelist um, in either a prefix that is based on the part name or on the class name. And the class name then includes the namespace prefixes as well in this case. Um, so there's two different groups for the filters. There's one for code coverage, or the other one is for tracing. And if you do the one for tracing, the things that you have configured will also not show up on either the trace log files that you can make with XEbook or the stack traces that you see on screen. The type is either a whitelist or blacklist for either the path or the namespace. And then the third argument is an array of filters. So just to show how that works, um, in my little project, my side project that I'm, I'm writing, I, uh, I use Dram as my top-level namespace, and I use uh, MongoDB for all my MongoDB queries in there. So what I've done here, I will configure a filter that says, why well, only for tracing, I want to include only all the class prefix that are either the empty string, which means PHP internal functions, or everything that starts with Dram, or everything that starts with MongoDB slash. And all the rest will then be ex excluded from this. You can do a similar thing for code coverage. So I run uh, code coverage on a project that has a few errors in it at the moment. Uh, that's probably because it couldn't connect to the internet, to be honest. And when I run this with uh, PHP 7.2, it takes about four minutes to run. It takes 56 megabytes of data. It is a bit on the slower side. Uh, it makes a few network connections as well. So that's sometimes a bit slower. Um, but what I did before P uh, XDebug 2.6 is would also do code coverage for all of PHP unit, which then PHP unit promptly ignores and deletes from its output, which is what it's supposed to. Now, with the filters enabled, uh, it suddenly runs in two minutes, and it uses half the amount of memory, which, if this is a problem for you, this helps a lot. But the only caveat is that you need to set a filter before code gets included. So, PHP unit already has a whitelist built in for doing code coverage for specific bits, um, but it is kind of naive because it just deletes everything else and does, just doesn't display it. Um, but in order to make this properly work, you need to set the filter before you basically load any PHP unit code at the moment. Um, so what I'm doing here, I'm creating an auto prepend file that I have to prepend setting the filter before PHP unit gets executed here. Um, I know pr for pretty sure that in the next release of PHP unit, this will done automatically for you. Exactly how is a bit unsure yet, but I'm sure once this comes out, either Sebastian or I will write a little blog post about it to, uh, to tomorrow in a week apparently. There you go. You hear it here first. All the latest news about PHP. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of um, kind of handy, and it saves a lot of time making sure the computer does not do things that are just going to be thrown away anyway. All right, Xdebug 2.7, which is in beta, uh, it out support for PHP 7.3. It's going to come out um, soonish, uh, probably not before PHP 7.3 comes out, but hopefully very soon after that, because there's still a few bugs that I still need to fix. Um, but support for 7.3 is kind of important in there. What it also allows you to do now is allow debugging of things that start other processes. So the way how Xdebug connections work, when PHP starts with Xdebug, it will make a connection to your ID. Now, if you would start a process from PHP by using PCNTL exec, for example, or any of the other features, whenever you start a program, all the network connections that have been made will be inherited by the called program which suddenly means that if you would create a program, uh, another process, you now have two processes using the same debugging connection. 
and you can't guarantee in which order things are sent again anymore. Any ID just gives up and doesn't know what to do this anymore, right? So, what the the, the change in XDBook is that when it detects that a network connection is made by a different process ID of the process that it currently runs, it aborts the current connection and then restarts it. So now the ID has two big two debugging connections independently of the process. So it can then debug these things independently without falling all, all over each other. So it is a very handy thing to do, yeah, handy thing to have if you have things forking other programs. All right, uh, XDBook says that it's open source and free as in free beer. Uh, hopefully XDBook saves you a lot of time if you have never used this before. Uh, and working on XDBook takes me a lot of time, especially because the clever people that do more things to PHP keeps fixing things to make things go faster, but then that ends up causing more work for me. Uh, but that's how it goes. Anyway, how much time do I have left? No more time. So I can't give you a demo right now. If you're interested in seeing a demo, come find me in one of the breaks and I'm happy to show that to you. Uh, do I have time for questions or also not? No, also no time for questions. <laughs> that's okay, I'll be around here and all day tomorrow. Please come and find me, uh, come and interrupt conversations. Uh, happy to talk to you and uh, yeah, uh, about XDBug daytime support, MongoDB, all these things. And thank you for attending and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>